Greetings and welcome to Halif Wood Museum. This is in Bolton, uh, United Kingdom obviously, uh, Lancashire, that kind of area. So the, the building that we're looking at now, the Tudor part of the building is 16th century, some parts of it are 15th century as well. And then to that side there, I'm just trying not to break my neck on these cobbles, that is the Jacobean side, the stone side. So let's uh, get over here. So there's been many different owners of this property. The most famous is going to be Samuel Crompton. Now Samuel Crompton is famous for inventing the spinning mule, which revolutionised the way that the industrial age was in, in, in Britain at the time. So looking at this property, you'd probably think you have to be highly rich to live here at that, at that time, the 16th, 17th century. But in fact, this place was used by tenants for, for over 200 years. And that's when Samuel Crompton lived here and invented this, the famous spinning mule which I'll get into in a minute. I'm going to get inside and show you what's around there. There's a lot of artefacts in there, dating back from that kind of time period. Let's show you this side part here. I'll do a tour at the back of it at the end, but just to show you a bit now. So in 1899, Lord Leverhulme bought this property and then he spent about three years restoring it bringing it back to its former glory, adding all the things that are inside that are there now, the furniture and so on, because it fell into a complete state of disrepair, as you can imagine. So tenants were living here for over 200 years, like I said, and then they also used it for uh, cattle. At the back there's a dairy part of the building, so they used it, a lot of cattle in here. So you can imagine the state that it must have been in before it was redone. But like I say, yeah, three years it took him to do it. And then he gifted this building to the people of Bolton as a museum so they could come and see how people used to live before the Industrial Revolution. So let's get in now and go and see what it's all about. So that's where I've just come up from there. So first of all we'll look into the bedroom. Now I don't know how well that's picking up because it's a bit dark in here but can you imagine those digging in your back? Because that's not exactly thick. You see this here, this chest? Good view of that. You have a guess what that's made out of? You had a guess? That is pony skin. So horse, horse skin, horse skin chest. Never seen one of them before. We've got some of the portraits. That's the Bible box from 1712. Let's go into the next one. Now that portrait there, did now this four squeaky. That is a portrait of Jonathan Simpson, which was a friend of uh, of the Lord that owned owned the property, the one that redid everything. The old dunking chair. I believe that's when they used to dunk the witches. So you'd sit in there, that'd be attached, attached to the rope like it is now, and they'd dunk you in the water. All the old, old beams. See the floor, the shape of this floor, it's like an angle going down. There's a staircase up to the loft. We'll get in there shortly. So there's the spinning machine that revolutionised the industrial age in Britain. All thanks to Samuel Crompton. There's a bigger version of it in the other room. I'll show you that one now. I don't know how original that that work is on the ceiling there. Look at that one.
that's honestly the flow. An old organ. So there's one of the bigger versions to the spinning mule. Show you a picture of it there if that helps at all. How it how it actually worked. I don't know if that's maybe an earlier version to it. Oh, staircase going down, I'll go down there in a minute. So in this place, all the things that you see around, all the furniture, the chairs, the you know the pictures and so on. They're all from the area around here and they are supposed to represent what the life would have been like before the spinning mule, before the industrial revolution happened and how people used to live. So like in the kitchen, let's go through here first. So like in the kitchen you've got some of the old cooking utensils and stuff like that to show you how they actually would have, would have done that back in the day. So this room that I've just been in, I forgot to mention that this wouldn't have actually been here originally. I think it was here, around this area here, there was um, some ladders that came up through the kitchen into here. But let's, let's get on with it. So this is the study, a nice view of the grounds around, and the old writing desk. I think this is one of the biggest rooms. The Norris withdrawing room, built in 1648. Some old cabinets. Again with these ceilings. Let's go over here. So when I first came in, the lady was telling me that the Outside they used to have a fountain and like a nice little garden area with York Stone down and somebody robbed it. So now they've had to put the fence around. Let's see if I can show you. So they've had to put a fence around out there to try and stop people coming back doing it again. Some of the old carvings in the wall there. this one then. I wonder if that's the toilet down there. This little room. Possibly. Possibly was a toilet that. What's this room? The Norris dining area, dining room. Again with the seat with the ceilings. Don't know what period. Look at that. That bird's cage. Looks like it. Again with the nice ceilings. I don't know if that's got some connection to the the owners of the house or anything like that. The 
great hall. Go into the kitchen. So we've got some of the cooking stuff in here. The old blunderbust. That's an iron for ruffles. You know, you used to wear the ruffles around the neck. You'd bend them over that. The old walls. Into the dairy now. So, as I was saying before, a lot of the things in here what was um, added to try and show what life would have been like before the Industrial Revolution. So, that's for ironing clothes, a press. A few other little bits and bats in here. Snowshoes for a horse. That's a leather water holder, water bottle. Some of the uh, items for catching animals. Apparently you use that one for eels that would go in between them prongs and get stuck. Like a fox trap, a mole killer. I've been reading through the, uh, the guidebook. There's also some people here that will help you, to show you a bit about the place. So that just goes into the Great Hall again. So we'll finish up in the kitchen I think. be in style with the, with the bricks and all the old cobbled flooring so I couldn't get into the attic apparently they only do tours certain times of years because they have uh, bats living in there and they're protected there's an outside door wonder where that one goes to places like this always have a basement Let's carry on round. Oh, put it down. So this is the fence I was talking about inside, what they've had to put round to stop people thieving. That is low, in my opinion. To come to somewhere like this and to rob, just even the stones, this is what they were taking, the stone. From the pictures that are seen, you went through there and that's where the water fountain and the nice garden area was. Obviously, like I say, it's gone now. Another little entrance there. And a clock face. The Roman numerals. Maybe that's another way in there as well. Let's get a good view. So I hope you've enjoyed this one today. Halif Wood Museum in Bolton. So it is a free entry because it's a museum, it's owned by the council. So I mean, it's not, it's not very difficult to get to. So if you want to come and have a visit, I'd definitely recommend this one. Nice Tudor style. <laughs>